Hello, everybody. It's uh, James. Um, uh, this is my uh, CEO Jimbo playlist. Um, I have another video on the missing airliner, Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. Um, last count of how many videos I've, I've done on this subject. Um, continues to um, interest me, um, not fascinate me. And um, I'm writing a book on the subject and so on. This um, episode is on parts. As um, the, the, uh, some of you know that I've watched before, I, I'm doing this sort of in a rotation where I work for two weeks on part one, which is um, witnesses, and then uh, switch um, to parts and spend two weeks on that, and then switch to a navigation, um, navigational nuances, and, and then the fourth section is um, other nuances more or less um, communication and timing. Um, so anyway, um, this has been kind of a tedious week. The parts tend to be that way. And I don't really have anything, um, you know, any breakthroughs to speak of or anything revolutionary. Um, there's certainly kind of some exciting things going on, but, um, you know, nothing just really is, is you know, big shocking news this time. Um, I spent quite a bit of time working on this map. Um, and I, I don't know what's motivating me to do this because all I need to do is like pull my atlas out. I have an atlas, I'm pretty sure, kind of in a, a stack of books, but I've been sort of working on this on my own. Um, you maybe recognize this from, from a long time ago. I, I just did this quickly on a piece of paper. I just simply had right in the center of my page here is the, the Maldives, um, more or less male Maldives, the capital. And um, down here is Perth. And um, uh, I just went to um, uh, online to kind of check distance between those two airports to find out how far it is. And it's um, roughly about um, 3,500 miles, roughly. This outer circle is yet um, 3600 I think they said 40 uh, three 3041 miles um, but anyway um, this is on a hunch or just kind of the visualization that I'm getting is that um, um, there's a source and I, I don't know exactly who they are right offhand I, I really haven't been working on this that much so on but somebody kind of put forth that this fire suppression bottle arrived two weeks after the plane disappeared on the Maldives from wherever the plane crashed. If it was from the plane, it pulled up on the beach, uh, floated up on the beach on the Maldives. And um, it seems preposterous to me that the, you know, that if the plane landed, the, the authorities for the longest time, if they're not still saying, yeah, they were saying that it cra may have crashed or landed on the water just west of Perth on the seventh arc um, of a satellite um, uh, radial thing deal. Um, and that would put it like right about here and so on. And um, this, is, this circle right here, just above my finger here, is... Um, basically the 3,000 mile circle. So, you know, it's, um, it, you know, if something popped out of the plane, um, you, you know, and, and made the Maldives in two weeks, it must have traveled pretty fast, um, going 3,000 miles. I mean, I, I think I calculated that's like about eight, 15 miles per hour. I don't remember what I calculated on that. Um, because I, I did, I just did the math. I, I think that the plane probably crashed here. This is, it took off from Kuala Lumpur. And um, there's a lady that said that she saw it um, on the water, like right in this area. Um, um, and um, that would put it kind of more in the um, 1755 mile 
range. So roughly about 1,500 miles here as opposed to 3,000 miles down here. So about half as far. Um, still a long way. But um, um, most of the parts ended up kind of down in Africa here. So it's like the first one may have dropped off two weeks later and the other ones continued on past the Maldives and ended up down here two years later. Um, so anyway, think about that. Um, here's, here's kind of the plan for the night. Um, you've seen these before, maybe if you've been watching. This is just kind of a little note page that I made just a few minutes ago on what this one would include. Um, I can't get a smooth... Hold on this. Um, small backpack. Oh, um, this is kind of, I made this up. Um, the, in, in my um, uh, um, study here, um, there's basically kind of two different groups of parts. There's parts from the outside of the plane. Like you you got like aileron and flap um pieces and even like a an, an entire flapper on minus the trailing edge that's been found and stuff like that there's been like um some there's like a scrap of there's a part of this engine here that has the actual rolls royce um logo on it and so on that you know and there's something that says no step and they think that it's probably from the horizontal stabilizer back there and so forth. Um, but there's also some parts that have been found from inside of the airplane. Um, so this kind of, let this represent the airplane here and um, so on. There's like a suitcase that's been found. There's been um, um, uh, some other things and so on. So I'll, I'll open that up a little bit later in the thing and kind of play with that. Um, so back to this. Um, and and in and I forgot the backpack in there, so I just wrote it here. And it's kind of in trade because I think that there's two things. There's um, that may be the same thing. There's like a com the computer case and there's a camera case. And I'm not quite sure if there's actually two, or if people are calling it a, a the case. Some people call it a. Um, camera case and some people call it a laptop case but we're just talking one case or we may be talking two cases I'm not quite sure but anyway um uh I'll get onto that later cushions panes there's some was news this is not recent stuff this is like like two or two or three years after the plane was found these were kind of like found and it's been almost 10 years um and so on but that's still definitely kind of um you know, pieces of the puzzle here that seat cushions were found. And I forgot to put seat cushions in there, so I don't have everything in that bottle that was in here. I, I um, should have stuck in at least, like, one seat cushion and one, like, window pane and and um, so on. There's, like, aluminum foil piece from, they think, from the windows, and I could have put that in there. But um, you'll see. I just have kind of the basics in, inside the plane there. Um, uh, non closet panel um there there were basically two different panels that were found in the plane um that, that were found kind of um washed up on beaches somewhere i think down in africa i think both panels one of the panels is sort of like a broken up mosaic of like several different parts make one panel and the other one is a um, kind of a scrap of a bottom piece of a panel like a door um um, this is the um, non-closet panel. It's it's basically the bottom section of a door, and um, th this is kind of like the shape of it. Somebody found the thing on the beach that kind of looks like this, and they're saying that it's supposed to go here, and I don't understand how it would go there because it's a door and it's supposed to open and close. So I kind of wonder if they even have the... Um, right place um, where they have a picture of one door and it's actually a, a different door um like like um they may be saying that it's 
you know, um, supposed to be just inside this door. And in actuality, there's actually a door on the plane, like right here, and it may be this door. And that's why it, the, the pieces don't match up because they're saying that it's this door and it may actually be this door. Uh, I'll get to that later because I have a picture of the plane that I'll show you. Um, we're at 10 minutes, so we're about halfway point here. Um, so anyway, um, th this um, door panel thing is, um, this is kind of a drawing of it. It's, um, there was supposed to, um, they don't have the, the um, they don't have this table. That This is a person, you know, um, pulling the table down. This is in the table down position where you use it as a table. And if you want to retract it and get rid of the table out of your way kind of thing, you, you raise it up and then you probably twist a little thing and it like hangs on the door and, and so on. Um, and um, anyway, for s somehow this um, um, table is not there. And I've always, that's some kind of um, something that that's very, interesting to me is like how did that table get broken off they're not telling me about what the hinges look like are they broken hinges um did they just you know um they um stop using that table over time and they took off without having the table there i i don't know um i i kind of there was a time when i was kind of wondering whether there whether this plane landed safely on the water and people had maybe like broken this table off to try to break their way out of the plane. Um, and I, I still haven't ruled that out. I don't know that I'm that sure, but, um, it, it's a possibility. Hold on to that thought. Um, so, and I don't know what's happening to my focus here. That's somebody else is doing. It's almost like the, um, what do you call that? Um, artificial intelligence is, Exciting to do that. I don't know. Um, so anyway, um, so I was going to try to show you in my book. I don't know if I'll actually get to that or not. Um, but in, in chapter six, um, external parts, sub chapter four, this is kind of about the most interesting part of my research. It's a section called fragments and other. And there's basically two fragments. There's like a wing fragment. It's like the I don't know exactly what part of the wing that one is. They don't really clarify. Um, they did say the flap was on the left wing flap and it was like the tip of the, you know, it was the outer section of the flap. Um, both of these were found on the Maritarius. Um, they just happened to have that on this map here. This is Maritarius. Um, so the, these two flaps... The, the wing part and the flap were found here maybe in about 2015 or 2016, and they have markings on them, um, writing or, or code words or something. And, and um, I think it's the flap that, um, that has kind of a unique um, um, stenciling for uh, Malaysia Airlines. So they pretty much have... Um, um, you know, identified that, you know, that, that this, you know, plane is, is you know, it, at least a, a, you know, a piece of the plane has been found that it couldn't be anything else. And, and there is a 747 that's like deep in the water here that was only partially found. It took off from Taiwan for um, Maritarius Island. There's an airport there and it caught on fire with computers on board as it was approaching Maritarius, however you say that. And they, they called the radio, you know, the tower there and said that they were having fire warnings and problems and they weren't sure that they were going to make it. And then they disappeared and, you know, on, on the radio and every radar and everything else. And after searching, um, uh, the, I guess one of the two black boxes was found. The other one has, is still at large and so on. Um, but um, anyway, they, they um, get back to this flight, Malaysian Airlines Flight 370, that there's um, like two parts here that are pretty much um, um, all but certain that it was MH370. And there's some other ones too. The panel I was telling you um not the one that's on the door, but there's another one that's on, that's in a closet that has like closet carpeting 
wall-to-wall carpeting or something like that. That just it was Malaysia Airlines carpeting. So um, there's no way it could have been um, this uh, 747 that crashed right in this area. There was a, a like a South African 767 that crashed somewhere along Eastern Africa, and there's like all kinds of Boeing parts like sprayed around that area. But you know they there there is kind of some um, you know, evidence that, you know, that Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 parts are at least mixed in with the others. Um, so um, that's about it. The spring engine, this is the final one here. Is This is a fairly recent story. Um, this was just within the last two years or so where this guy named Godfrey, um, he's also the guy that... Um, um, thinks that he's kind of located the plane through this fancy um, um, whisper um, technology that I've talked about in past videos. But he um, um, was in, involved with the finding of this um, gear door, and he's convinced that the aircraft um, landed with its landing gear down on the water in a sort of a landing configuration because there's an engine part that has hit the gear door on the inside of the gear door, which indicates that the gear must have been down because when the plane crashed, that part flew off and hit the inside. And if the gear was up, then there wouldn't be that mark on the inside of the gear door. So um, anyway, um, uh, that's kind of where we go there. Where do I go from here? Um, this this is my other map um, that you've seen before. Which I, I, get, I don't really have anything to say on that. I was hoping I would find my. Oh yeah, yeah. This is. I was gonna just briefly show you here. Um, this this is um, Godfrey, um, and this is um, Blaine Blaine Gibson. He's the one that's instrumental in finding most of these parts. And Godfrey is kind of more instrumental in um, kind of tracking the whereabouts down to the whole body, you know, and wings of the airplane. The main thing through this um, whisper technology, which is using um, like um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence or whatever to kind of like figure out, you know, after the fact where, you know, the plane had flown by marks that it made in the sky or something like that. Um, but anyway, these two guys have like talked to each other, um, about parts, um, just by, he's kind of, this guy's more of a parts guy. This is kind of more of a, you know, um, navigation guy, but, um, they're, they're kind of in concert a little bit. Um, so, um, where are we going with this? Uh, I, let's see. Lost my. I don't know if I can get this. I'm gonna show you the plane. Yeah, here's the, this from a tablet that I have. Um, this is just from like Wikipedia, I believe. Um, but you see that there's a, a door like right here, and there's a door like right here, and there's windows here. Um, and so, you know, these, you know, this is back to this, like, let's say that the plane kind of like broke either right here or right here, just kind of broke in half. And, you know, now it's open to kind of let everything out, let the seat backs out, um, let the, you know, there's a backpack sitting here, you know, near the, near this area and it kind of goes flying out or whatever. Um, so I'm going to open this up. Almost all there. Okay, so the, the parts are out here. Now, there are, let's say that this wood is like the ocean here. And, you know, this thing just 
sinks to the bottom. There's the body. There's the nose cone kind of thing. But the parts are still out here floating on the water. Um, we've got um, a smashed up bag. We've got a fire suppression bottle. We've got an interior panel. We've got a Gucci bag. We've got a closet panel, the one and only interior part. I, I was going to mention this early and it didn't quite come up, but it's like I, there's a, um, I don't know if it's still on the internet, but there was an article that I ran across and I, I don't know that I have really documented it that well, but I'm pretty sure I found one that basically told me that there was only one part that came out of the plane. All the other ones are external parts, but this one thing is like from the inside of the plane. Um, this closet panel, um, but then, <laughs> you know, you do a little further research and you find out that there's some other ones too, a Gucci bag, for instance, um, uh, seat back video screen frame, um, fire suppression bottle. That's kind of like a, uh, slightly different one because it's probably from the, um, lower lobe and not from the top deck where the people sit. Um, this is laptop case and camera case. Remember I was telling you earlier about that, that this may actually just be one thing. People are calling it a laptop um, case. Some people are calling it a camera case, um, but it, it may be just one piece. I, I don't know. Um, so, um, that's where we have these all ended up. Um, this thing ended up on the Maldives. Um, so it's like right there. And most of these other things were like way down here in Africa. Um, And um, so anyway, wherever the plane splashed, landed, crashed into the water or whatever, um, two weeks later, this one showed up here. And two years later or, or more, these all showed up down here. Um, I think that the plane probably like crashed here. There's a lady that said she saw it, saw the wings and the tail um, on the water from a, a commercial flight. She was a passenger. And I think that because of the, the aircraft has a gray belly, um, kind of gray wings too, but somehow that, you know, the fuselage just didn't show up very well. Um, it, it um, you know, that's the way it was. I think both engines probably broke off. I think that maybe the nose was probably gone but I guess that wouldn't have made any difference. She wouldn't have noticed that one way or the other. But I, I think that maybe that, that the nose would have either like floated away somewhere else or just sunk immediately to the bottom or something like that. Um, uh, so that's about it for this time. Um, uh, there's a lot more um, that I probably go, but we're at... Um, 24 minutes. Yeah. Th thanks for watching. Please thumbs up, subscribe, and tell all your friends. And um, watch for this subject again um, on parts in about two months, just under two months. Um, and the next one will be on um, navigational nuances on like um, Inmarsat and radar and what I was talking about, that Godfrey guy, that his whisper technology and so on. So um, be well. Have a good one. So long. Thanks for watching. Bye.